What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a quick trading update. What am I currently trading? What did I trade today on the 2nd of May in 2019? And we're also going to get into a couple of other stocks and ETFs that I'm keeping my eyes on for the rest of this week, tomorrow, and for the rest of this month, heading into the middle of the month here in May of 2019. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content that I'm producing here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, there's two links down below in the description box that you should check out. One of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. Both of those are are 100% free of charge and we're building a community in there that I guarantee you guys will find value in that community if you're not already in there. So without further ado guys, let's just do the rundown of the overall market here starting off with the SPX, also known as the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. Companies. We can see we ended up closing the day down $6.21, down about 0.21%, but that doesn't show the entire picture of how scary the S&P was actually trading today. If we can go to the one day, one minute, we can see the sell-off that we saw yesterday towards the end of the market after the Fed meeting, that continued today. We saw a big sell-off down to about 2900 right? We ended up gapping down from the close yesterday about 17 points from that 2917 close and it was getting pretty ugly guys that's literally about a 54 point drop in the S&P in the span of a day, right? We can see from the top 54 points all the way down to the 2900 level. But the fact that we closed on an upswing here, we're breaking out of that downwards resistance. Um, you know, the SMAs, the 50 and the 180 acting as resistances, we're breaking out of those points. That's a good sign that we could be heading up tomorrow. That's the first step we want to see in terms of heading up. So going over here to the NASDAQ, actually, let's go to the Dow because there's an order. I don't know why, guys. I do the Dow second. I'm sure you guys already know that if you've been watching the video. So I kind of want to stick to the order. The Dow Jones down 122 points, down 0.46% here. We broke through that support at $26,400. Ended up having a pretty decent red day. But just like the S&P, this one was getting very ugly, right? We gapped down to 26,180. We ended up closing the day on a little upswing here. Pretty good sign on the close there. So the NASDAQ ended up popping up to 7,800 today, right? This was, what time was this? Right at the open of the market. And then we tanked all the way down over 100 points down to about 76.82. And we closed on a nice little upswing here. We can see, let's see what time did this close at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard, roughly where this was priced. Roughly about nine points below from where we are. So at the close, the NASDAQ was probably down about a dollar or two because mind you, this is the future you're seeing here. So it's still running right now. Hence why it's saying it is green, right? But we did end up closing on a slight red day today from my memory in terms of the NASDAQ. So let's just run through some technicals very quickly here on the SPX, guys. We'll do that to the Dow, the NASDAQ, and then we'll get on with the rest of the video. So the S&P, we've been talking about this critical support level being, yes, you guessed it, the 50 simple moving average on this 184-hour chart. We were talking about that earlier in the group chat today. We talked about that yesterday, right? I talked about that yesterday in yesterday's video, saying how... If we were to sell off a bit more aggressively today as well as we did yesterday, which ended up happening, right? The 50 SMA is the spot that I was looking for to make sure the S&P was going to hold that level for the continuation of the uptrend. So we really haven't gotten the confirmation that the uptrend is continuing quite yet, but we are one step there by the fact, or for the fact rather, that we are seeing a green candlestick forming on top of here. And again, like we saw in the beginning of the video, we're seeing the nice reversal on the intraday chart, which is why it's super important in my eyes to look at a bunch of different charts, right? This makes you understand 
the short-term price action, right? We see again the bullish cross here, the reversal on a short-term basis. And then we get to look at a longer-term picture and we get to see, okay, it is maintaining this moving average. That's a good sign. But now we need to see the pop up even further. And if we go to the 20-day, one hour, we can see some very strong consolidation and the beginning of a bounce on a one eight on the 180 SMA here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. So this is very good for the SPX in terms of really rebounding from where we are right now. And let's say we end up breaking these critical levels. Let's say we break the 180 SMA to the downside tomorrow on this 20-day, one-hour chart. Let's say we end up gapping down tomorrow and we break 2,900 and let's say on this intraday chart and let's say, you know, on the 180, we end up breaking this 50 simple moving average and we start to head down. That's going to be a pretty significant break of pattern. And from there, in my eyes, that's going to lead to some more selling, maybe some panic selling in the S&P, kind of like what we saw this morning and yesterday after that Fed meeting, the Federal Reserve meeting. So the Dow Jones today, guys, again, we broke under that 24, uh, 26, rather, 400 uh, support level. Now we're trading above um, the 26, 200 level. So we're pretty much just trading in that 200 point um, you know, level here. Let me just quickly clear this draw set because it is a bit sloppy when I do my analysis throughout the day it does get a bit sloppy so if we can just see very quickly what I'm looking at here right just take a look at these levels right you see I just drew out the 26 um, 200 level there right this level right here old resistance right from back in the beginning of November old resistance from back towards the end of February we broke out of that level making a new support and that's where we're holding above today on the upswing that we saw towards the end of the market this is a very good sign that the Dow has found a new support level and quite frankly guys we're still at a higher low from the previous if I can just draw um, the trend line really quickly here you know, everything is looking pretty decent that the uptrend is still intact. We just need to see a break now out of the 26,400 resistance level for the Dow to make that a new support again. And from there, if the markets are healthy, right, if the markets push green in general, right, if the SPX is doing well, large caps are doing well over the next couple days, weeks, you know, this will lead us, in my opinion, to an all-time high in the Dow if we're able to break out of this level and eventually break out of 26 700 ish 26 800 which is the level that we next need to break out of right before hitting potentially hitting those all-time highs so that's what i'm watching right now in terms of the dow if we're going over here to the nasdaq guys we talked about this downwards trending channel that we were trading in we pretty much broke the support of that earlier today with that sell-off now it's looking like we're fighting back to break this the resistance of it now we want to get back into that channel and it seems like we are holding a support at a previous resistance level at about 7700 now from back in the middle of april that was a resistance level there we're holding it as a support this is a good sign after market hours guys with the market upswing that we saw towards the end of the day that the nasdaq wants to push up from here so that's pretty much it guys not much to talk about you know there was some panic selling earlier on today the S&P took a dive the Nasdaq the Dow but they do seem like they are recovering here over the latter half of the day and towards the end of the day into the aftermarket right from what we're seeing right now in the Nasdaq and like I've been talking about right an index, a stock, an ETF, a future, like we've been seeing here, especially the indexes, when they go up an exorbitant, exorbitant, hopefully that's a word, I think that's a word, when they go up a huge amount in terms of a couple of weeks, months, there's going to be time periods where we're going to see a retracement, a pullback that is healthy for any market, right? This is simply in my eyes right now, what I'm seeing in terms of the technicals, a healthy pullback, right? We've seen pullbacks in the past, right? Just take a look at my cursor here. We pulled back. We pulled back here. We pulled back. This could just be another pullback before we end up pushing up even higher, maybe to the $8,000 level for the NASDAQ. If we're going to the SPX, right, we're seeing all these pullbacks in the past. They're very, very healthy. So don't let this just spook you right now. Don't let this spook you. If we if we start to see aggressive selling off, maybe towards the 180 SMA, then I would be a bit spooked. But now 
the way I'm seeing it, guys, there's no reason to be a spooked quite yet. But let's say tomorrow we end up selling off 2%. I'd be a bit scared. But until that happens, guys, I feel cool right now with what the markets are looking like on a technical basis. So let's talk about very quickly what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. For all you that watched my video yesterday, you saw that I called out advanced micro devices, also known as ticker symbol AMD. And a bunch of you actually were able to capitalize on that trade. And if you were, drop a comment down below. Let me know how you did. And congrats to doing well on that one because it pretty much played out perfectly to how I ended up breaking it down yesterday, right? And for those of you guys that recall in yesterday's video, and honestly, over the past couple of videos, I've been wanting AMD to go down to that 26 level, roughly the 26 level, and for it to test that 180 simple moving average support that has been a support over the past couple of months. Notice how we bounced here, we bounced here, bounced here, bounced here, and we got the pullback yesterday, right? They've reported earnings a couple of days ago. We can see they reported earnings here. They pulled back aggressively the day, the day after, and today... It bounced like clockwork right off of that, guys. It was so quick of a move. But luckily, I was watching AMD again because I talked about it in yesterday's video. It was one of the top stocks that I was watching. And I wanted to see if it was going to break out or break above and just pop off that level. And it actually popped very aggressively, harder and quicker than I thought that it was. But luckily, again, I had my alert set. I was watching it. And I was able to get in, right? So AMD, again, it played out perfectly. If we just go back to the 180 real quick and look at this, take a look, guys. It hit that 180 SMA after market or pre market hours today. We can see the green candlestick was forming, it was trending up. If we go to the one day, one minute, we can see this a bit better. We were trending up a bit, which opened my eyes initially, especially since we were cracking into the 27 level. And then we took off like a launch pad here, guys. This is absolutely crazy. You don't see this off. Often, but this one was about a five six percent move in the matter of how long was that about an hour and 10 minutes and from there we started to sell off but at that point I was already out guys I got my 1.5 percent that I'm happy with and to be honest I got in a bit after this launch I didn't catch it at the perfect perfect time right rarely does it ever happen sometimes it does but rarely does it happen where I get it at the right time at the perfect time rather but I ended up just getting in Actually, after we ended up breaking this top, uh, this trend line that we're seeing here, and if I zoom out a bit to show you guys where that is from, that is actually a support from over the past couple of weeks, and now when we were under it, it was a resistance, right? So I actually wanted to see a break out of that resistance. In my eyes, that was step two. Um, you know, into getting the trade step or into getting into the trade rather. Step one was getting or seeing rather the bounce on the 180 SMA. That was step one. Step two for me to take the trade was again to get out of this resistance. We ended up getting out of the resistance. And if we go to the one day, one minute, ended up getting in here. And again, I took about 1.5%. It was a very quick trade, guys. Ended up getting out roughly at around 27.70, 27.75. And that was it on the day in terms of my day trade. So again, in the group chat, I was talking about how, and in yesterday's video, I was talking about, you know, the markets have been kind of scary, not insanely scary, right? Again, the correction is very healthy, but during these time periods, I like to be a bit cautious in terms of my swings, right? So I didn't end up opening any new swing positions today. I'm simply still holding on to Facebook stock and I'm holding on to Procter & Gamble. And Procter & Gamble actually, unlike Facebook today, um, Procter & Gamble ended up doing pretty well, right? We saw the sell-off yesterday. Today, we popped back up 0.6%. Just like I expected based off the pattern that we're seeing. And if you guys didn't watch yesterday's video, you didn't see the breakdown of this pattern, this common pattern that Procter & Gamble has been on, let me break it down for you right now, right? So we sold off after earnings. We all know that by now, right? And the pattern that we've been on based on what I'm seeing here is we have one nice green day and then the next day is a red day, a pullback day, right? So we have a good day followed by a pullback, followed by another good day, right? Take a look at this. Good day, pullback, right? Good day, followed by a pullback, 
good day, followed by a pullback. And today, guys, this is classified in my eyes as a good day, and the pattern is continuing. So based off what I'm seeing here, I got a question in the group chat. I don't think I was able to get back to it, but I think someone asked me, do you think Procter & Gamble is going to go up tomorrow? Personally, I think it is, right? Based on this pattern and based what we've seen, off what we've seen, right? Again, good day followed by a pullback day. And this was a good day, but it wasn't as big of a green day as we've seen in the past, which tells me, you know, there, there might be some more in the tank here, right? We could see another push up before we do see another sell off. So, yes, I do think it's going to go up based off of my research based off of my due diligence but don't just take that and buy the stock for yourself right you have to understand do your own research do your own due diligence your own technical breakdowns before trading any stock don't don't just trade it because i'm trading it don't just buy because i'm buying don't sell when i'm selling you have to understand how to do all of these different things and when the key is when to do all these different things on your own guys so procter and gamble that's the breakdown i'm in it i like it i'm swinging it i'm still holding it facebook this one again i'm in it at about 193 right still holding on to the shares have not yet to add more because we're just simply having troubles now breaking out of 195 we're in this 190 to 195 level right we've been trading in between these levels for a couple of days now so honestly I want to get out of 195. That's what I'm looking for. We almost got, well, this day we did actually, we got to 197. That was the day that it squeezed up very quick, but we sold off very aggressively, right? I want to see a day when we where we break 195, 196, and we hold that level, right? We've, we've broken it, right, over the past couple of days, but we haven't held that level. I want to see the break, the hold, and then the slow push up maybe to the 196s, 197s, and for the entire day to be a strong hold above that level before I add more money into it. And that's just the breakdown, right? Facebook, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm doing. I still view this one as a hold. I personally think if the markets do end up bouncing back, we slowly start to head to a $3,000 S&P 500. I think the Facebook stock is going to follow and we're going to see some gains from there. But of course, since Facebook is a larger cap company, right, if the S&P gets squashed, more than likely, right, not 100% guarantee, but more than likely Facebook is going to follow in the red if the S&P does end up aggressively selling off. And we're going to see that over the next couple of days, weeks here as we get deeper into the market, of course. Things are going to unfold, right? So let me know down below what you guys ended up doing today in terms of trading. That's all I did. Honestly, I traded AMD, right? I was tempted to get into TVIX, but I honestly missed the boat. Didn't really want to force anything there, but for all you TVIX traders out there, I did see it did well, and I am watching it heading into tomorrow. If we do end up pulling back aggressively, um, you know, just keeping it on the plan, on the watch list, right? Just in case we do end up selling off, right? So that's what I did in terms of my trading. Again, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And let's go through some stocks rapid fire that I'm personally watching. We don't have to go over Facebook and Procter & Gamble. Those are obviously ones that I'm watching, but I pretty much just did the breakdown there. AMD, I'm watching this one as well, right? We're trading in this channel now. A break out of $28, that resistance. It's going to be a breakout pattern on AMD. Watching that one very closely, but I feel like I've broken it down so many times. I don't really need to break it down again. So a couple of other different ones are Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC. This is one that I'm finding a bit attractive right now, right? We popped up to $31.00. 12 cents, right? We briefly broke out of this resistance from a couple months back towards the beginning of October, but we failed to hold above that level. We pulled back, and now we're actually holding a support from a previous resistance from the middle of March in 2019. So this is looking pretty good, right, guys? Not only are we holding this support, but we're also holding a higher low from the previous as well as the 50 SMA support level, and we're trending up here towards towards the close of the market and after market hours. So this is definitely one that I'm watching tomorrow. Ticker symbol B. A C again, Bank of America. And if we see how much margin it has to offer, not a crazy amount, right? If we were to get in, you know, right now, 
this would be a 2% trade up to previous resistances around $31. But let's say we end up getting a pullback at market open and a retest on that 50 SMA and we're, and we're able to get in at a better price. There's going to be an even bigger margin there. So BAC, I'm watching it. You guys, if you want to watch it, watch it. You know, this could definitely be a pretty solid play for tomorrow. So another one that actually, I believe, just reported earnings right now and it tanked a little bit after earnings is Activision Blizzard. And this is one that, let me just make sure that they did just report earnings. Yes, so they did report earnings today, and I didn't dive into their earnings quite yet, right? I didn't dive into their earnings quite yet, but if I see that their earnings were positive, right, this could be a pretty decent entry point on at V, especially if tomorrow we end up holding this 50 simple moving average support here that we're seeing, right? If we do end up holding this level and we slowly start to pop up on a solid positive earnings report, again, I didn't do my research. The earnings report could be complete crap. Let's just actually just see. Let's just see right here if they have any news on it. Okay, where is the actual numbers? EPS 0.78, sales 1.82 billion, but what were analysts expecting? That's what I want to see if they beat analysts' expectations. Nonetheless, I'm going to do my research on this afterwards, but what we saw the tank here, guys. This opened up a pretty solid margin of profit, and again, if we maintain this level tomorrow, and let's say we slowly start to pop up into the 47s, maybe mid-47 level, that's going to be, in my eyes, the continuation of the uptrend. This can be a pretty good entry on at V, ticker symbol ATVI. Again, if the earnings report was complete crap, right? That could end up sending the stock lower tomorrow, right? But if it was good, this pullback is opening up an opportunity in my eyes, and I'm going to do research. And I advise you to do research on all of these different stocks and their earnings before you do or take a position, rather. So at V, BAC, those are two that I'm watching. There was one more on my head. What was that one? Oh my gosh, guys. I'm forgetting right now off the top of my head. It was at V, uh, BAC. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry. I am forgetting the third one that I wanted to talk about. But nonetheless, there are a bunch of other ones here that we can talk about because there's no shortage of stocks in the stock market. Tesla, TSLA, we actually saw some funding money being raised. We got some news today that Tesla is raising money. I believe it was $2 million. Two bit Was it billion? I'm sure we can see. There's no way it was $2 million because that's nothing for Tesla. Let's see down here. Yeah, nonetheless, they are raising some a, a good amount of money, right? Tesla to offer 2.72. There it is. Tesla sees aggregate proceeds of about 2.3 billion. Is that it? Tesla looks to raise that's what it is. 2.3 billion dollars. We saw that ended up shooting up the stock very nicely this morning, right? 230 to 250 literally, guys. So could this be a catalyst? For Tesla over these next couple of days, right, for it to maybe push up higher, I think it definitely could be a catalyst, right, because a lot of people out there have been suggesting suggesting Tesla to raise money. So this can be a very good catalyst. Let's see if it pushes up. Let's see if the bulls take over now on Tesla. Very, very excited to see that. So I'm going to wrap off the video or wrap up the video here rather. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about Tesla, AMD, Facebook, Proctor. What do you guys think about my picks for tomorrow? Bank of America, at V. I would love to know what you guys think about those. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me for you to be a part of the community. I really appreciate, again, every single one of you out there taking your time to watch the